the stalking influencer. You'll be familiar with the concept of the stalker. I've explained in my superb video what is stalking, what that amounts to, but who does it, what drives it, what forms does it take. Because whilst many stalkers are narcissists, not all are, and therefore that detailed analysis of what is stalking is very useful, both in terms of understanding the different types of stalker there are, but also identifying how narcissists are involved in it. You'll also be familiar with the concept of an influencer, that dreaded word that is used to describe people that have decided that their proper career path is making TikTok videos and selling tat. There are, of course, some that have excellent social media profiles which entertain many people and rightly are able to make a living from doing so. They're naturally talented in that regard. Unfortunately, there are many, many who try to emulate their success, who have nothing meaningful to say and just end up believing that they are somehow influencing the world. One of the problems with social media that it has encouraged those who have nothing to tell us to believe that they do have something to tell us. And that's why you then end up with your social media feed being plastered with people's lunches and the travails of their ordinary mundane lives. Here, there appears to be a confluence of both stalker and influencer, which begs the question, is this a narcissist at work? The information comes from an article by David Wood of the Times newspaper, which runs with the headline, Social Media Influencer Risks Jail for Stalking Chelsea Players. A social media influencer who calls herself Devil a Baby grandiosity, could be jailed after admitting stalking two Premier League footballers and harassing a third. Stalking shows a sense of entitlement, a lack of emotional empathy for those affected by it, a lack of accountability for her behaviour, a lack of boundary recognition. Orla Sloan, aged 22, sent bizarre messages to Chelsea's Mason Mount, aged 24, after they had sex and changed her number at least 21 times when he blocked her. Mr. Mount, of course, taking the sensible step of finding that when her incessant messaging, which is a sense of entitlement and a boundary violation, became too much, he opted then that he would block her. I regularly explain to people that whilst blocking is better than nothing, it's far more effective, notwithstanding the inconvenience, to change your number, and then exercise discretion as to who you give that number to. See my detailed explanation in regard to that in my excellent book, No Contact. Here, Mr Mount, of course, engaged in blocking this individual, Paula Sloan's number, and found, of course, that it didn't work because she kept getting different numbers. Indeed, she changed her number at least 21 times, which shows a high level of harassing behaviours, hoovering, the need to assert control, a sense of entitlement and a lack of emotional empathy. Sloan admitted stalking Mound and the former Chelsea player Billy Gilmore, aged 21, having falsely claimed that she was pregnant with his baby. Telling of lie, triangulation. It is quite common for narcissists to use the issue of pregnancy as a means to assert control over a victim. Watch my video Impregnation for more in that regard. The male narcissist will often get somebody pregnant as a means of asserting control over them, and female narcissists will invariably, but not always, claim that they're pregnant or get pregnant. Here, this individual falsely claimed that she was pregnant, knowing it to be a lie, but doing so for the purposes of assertion of control over Mr Gilmore. Sloan also pleaded guilty to harassing Mount's teammate, Ben Chilwell, 26. Thus, there's a pattern of behaviour here in terms of not just harassing one person, but three, incessantly messaging them, st stalking them, essentially engaging in repeated hoovers. Sloan was warned that she could face time in prison. 
Westminster Magistrates Court was told that Mount had blocked communications, but Sloan, who has 82,000 Instagram followers, use of social media, sent him a screenshot of her buying a new phone number alongside the caption, I'm not buying food anymore so I can get more numbers. I'll be faster than you. Triangulation threat. In a message from an Instagram account using the name Devil Baby, Sloan wrote, I can morph at any time, so let me apologise and set things right. Although she morphs at any time, that is not a recognition of what she actually is, but rather her narcissism enabling her to issue that as a threat. Also, the issue of an apparent apology is false contrition. Mount, who has represented England since 2019, expressed concern that Sloan had an obsession with him, the court was told. He didn't know what she was capable of. Sloan appeared in court and pleaded guilty to stalking Mount and Gilmore and causing serious alarm or distress without violence in relation to Chilwell. The offences took place between June and October last year. Now, pausing there, you might ask yourself, why is it that a narcissist would plead guilty to the charges against them? Well, often, as you know, narcissists will use the first line of the twin lines of defence, which is denial. And in the circumstances, will enter a plea of not guilty and maintain, driven by their narcissism, that they haven't done anything wrong. Her pleading guilty is not an admission by her that she knows that she's done wrong, but rather her own assertion of control through agreement. No doubt she's been advised that she would be better served by issuing a guilty plea in light of the mountain of evidence. Now, even with some narcissists, they would not accept that, but some would go along with it because... The threat to control of a potential prison sentence, which could be alleviated by an early guilty plea, means that they are more likely to do that. And therefore, in certain instances, usually as a consequence of advice and the potential greater threat to control of a jail term or an extended jail term, means that a narcissist enters a guilty plea. It is not to be taken as a genuine admission of wrongdoing, because of course the narcissist is incapable of that. The court was told that Chilwell had met Sloan online, hunting ground, and invited her to a party where she met Mount, and they later had sex. Jason Setal, for the prosecution, said they stayed in contact for almost six months before Mount decided the relationship was not going to progress. Therefore, it's likely that that juncture that Mount was an intimate partner, secondary source in her fuel matrix, that they were dating, and then he decided it wasn't going to go anywhere, and his attempt to tell her that, of course, wounded her or amounted to challenge fuel. And therefore, as the barrister explained, Mount was then subjected to a bombardment of messages, sense of entitlement, hoovering, initial grand hoover in order to prevent him from ending the relationship as it was. He asked Sloan to stop messaging him. Futile, of course, that assertion of boundaries, but received messages from new numbers. Sloan soon targeted Gilmore, the Scotland International, and tagged his family and friends in messages claiming she had aborted his baby, telling of lie triangulation, allegations that were completely fictitious, the court was told. Gilmore, who joined Brighton and Hove Albion last September, flagged Sloan's behaviour to club bosses and safety measures were introduced. Sloan of Pimlico, South West London, was granted unconditional bail and will be sentenced on June the 21st. Yet there's more about Sloan. The Daily Mail by Ben Endley and Martin Robinson tells us, Instagram devil baby and football stalker Orla Sloan rejected her hippie childhood and launched her trashy OnlyFans career from the bedroom of a tired £290,000 semi in Exeter she shares with her Reiki therapist mother. Demonstrating, of course, that... Another individual that utilises only fans, a means of showing off tits and ass for the purposes of gaining money. Sloane grew up in Devon with her bohemian parents, with one family friend claiming that the once lovely girl transformed her life and looks for the worse over the past five years after being consumed by a desire for social media attention. In fact, what's likely is that social media 
caused part of her, or rather social media allowed her true personality to come forward, since for many narcissists, use of social media, the fuel that comes with it, the ability to assert control is utterly irresistible. Apparently, she had dark, almost black hair throughout her childhood, but then went blonde and appears to have had cosmetic surgery. Again, quite common for a somatic narcissist to go down that route. The hippie-tinged wardrobe and hoodies were also discarded for sexualised gear more fitting to an aspirational football wag since joining Instagram in 2018 as a teenager and TikTok and OnlyFans more recently. It's simply extraordinary and quite upsetting what's happened to Orla, a friend to male online, she was lovely when she was a girl, very bright and friendly, musical, gener musically generally talented. But once she got into her late teens, she seemed to be seduced by the need for social media attention. Or rather, as she got into her teens, her narcissism came to the fore. She changed into this vamp character who was all about getting people to look at her. It's amazing how she's changed, and frankly, it's pretty trashy. And now, it's all gone horribly wrong. Sloan who has 81,000 Instagram followers, boasted in an interview last April, assertion of control, boasting, sense of grandiosity, that she had made £50,000 streaming videos of herself eating Percy Pig sweets in the nude. Hmm, classy. In contrast, her LinkedIn says she works as a kitchen porter in a Devon Fish restaurant, and her love of the sea is clear, regularly posting photos of herself in her swimsuit on lavish trips out of Bali, Mykonos and Indonesia. Again, showing her somatism, somatism with regard to the places that she's gone and, of course, the need to show off about those places, both in terms of where she's been and also pictures of herself. After her conviction, she faces jail for stalking Mason Mount, his Chelsea teammate Ben Chilwell and Scotland international Billy Gilmore. There is a curious disconnect between two social media profiles of Orla Sloan, the self-styled devil baby. On Instagram, the 22-year-old is a glamorous jet-setter with 82,000 Instagram followers, regularly posts sexy selfies on apparently lavish trips out in London, Bali, Mykonos and Indonesia, and streaming videos of herself eating Percy Pig sweets in the nude. She previously told her 18,000 TikTok followers that she'd received a life ban from Asda, a supermarket, after posting a video of herself dancing in the aisles of the supermarket in a bikini. Showmanship. Sense of entitlement. Lack of boundary recognition. She also uploaded a video of herself miming the words to a song, I Don't Give a Fuck, alongside a caption that read, when he starts talking about how much money he has. Money is a residual benefit, of course. Hinting that she is not interested in how wealthy her potential male suitors are. But over on LinkedIn, the site that focuses on work rather than play, she has just one follower. And that single person has not reacted to her single status update when she revealed she was working as a lowly kitchen porter in Rockfish Restaurant in her home city of Exeter. She does not appear to have returned to the site to update it that she was later working as a shop assistant in a local branch of Marks & Spencer, a regular job she claims to have abruptly walked out on to become a model, lack of accountability, a role in which she claims to have made just fifty made £50,000 in just four months. Sloan now describes herself as online as a brand ambassador for cheap clothes label Fashion Nova. But like so much about Sloan, there are major questions over how much of this is real and how much is artifice created to grow that Instagram follower number. Or, more accurately, it's her narcissism at work. Sloan lives in a tired three-bedroom semi-detached home worth £290,000 with her mother, Katrina Sheehan. She grew up in Buckfastley, close to Totnes, a Devon town famed for its hippie fringe and eccentrics, and her education seems to have followed this spirit. She attended a Steiner school, famed for letting children run free to find their own route through life, rather than being regimented or disciplined. This might contribute, of course, to a lack of control environment, which was formative with regard to what she has become. Her parents are thought to have split up as Orla approached her teens. Her father apparently moved out, and soon Orla and her siblings were living in a more modest small house in Exeter, their rural childhood now left behind. It was from an upstairs bedroom here that she would launch her influencer career. And it was for this that transformation into Devil Baby seems to have been made. She received many comments on her Instagram platform about perfection, stunning, wow, and so forth, which of course is all fuel. 
This seems to have encouraged her, and soon her page would be a stream of ever more sexualized selfies, assertion of control, showcasing, attracting ever more attention, fuel, including eventually the attention of footballer Ben Chilwell. The England left-back had spotted her increasingly high-profile Instagram account, presumably scrolled through her many selfie sexes, and messaged her to invite her to a party at his Surrey home. It was there that she would meet him for one night only, sleep with fellow player Mason Mount. Mount said he was terrified she'd show up at Chelsea's training ground in Cobham, Surrey. And Gilmore, 21, who moved to Brighton and Hove Albion last year, said he was so traumatised by the stalking he was unable to sleep. There was a bombardment of messages. In one WhatsApp message using the name Only God 10, she wrote, I found out about Bethany, Esme and more. I will find out everything. She sent him a photo of herself paying £12.99 for a new telephone number. She, of course, is exhibiting jealousy in relation to the footballer in finding out that he is involved with other people and then seeks to triangulate him with that information. The fact is that her behaviour demonstrates her sense of entitlement, an absence of emotional empathy, exhibits a lack of accountability. She shows repeated hoovering. She shows through the use of social media as a hunting ground. She shows delusion, use of threat. She shows that she has grandiosity, that she demonstrates haughty behaviours, that she shows no emotional empathy for the victims that she pursued, and that is quite clearly there are a lot of narcissistic indicators with regard to the way she has behaved over a sustained period of time, not just in relation to one person, but in relation to several. It's highly likely, based on that information, that she is a narcissist, but is described as a stalking influencer rather than what she actually is. And it once again demonstrates that that world of TikTok and Instagram, of where the so-called influencers reside, it is but a hunting ground for so many of our kind. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.